Uh, thank you everyone for coming to the final, gen final general session for the Ask You Camp program for 2022. This is just a Q&A session. We have invited three panelists to tell you about the experience applying to Cambridge and also to answer any questions that you have. So let me just share the screen. So the three panelists we have invited is Abel Wilson Waletwa, um, Chunzu Nachube Chiyumba, and Raymond Damti Owusu. So Abel and Raymond are already here with us and we're still waiting on Chunzu. Uh, before we start the session, I want to talk about a few housekeeping points. So first of all, it is about three weeks to your deadline. So the deadline of the, the funding deadline is 1st of December. And we have promised that we're going to provide application fee payments to a number of you. So we, I think that has been sent around, but we need you to fill out the application request form before the 25th of November with the understanding that you are giving us the right to log into your application and make the payment on your behalf. And once we make that payment, we're going to submit your application. So I need to stress that your application needs to be ready by the time we are paying for the application because I'll just go to um, click the submit button for you. So your references have to be, your referees have to have sent your references in and you have to have uploaded all your documents, written all your essays to the standard that you want them to be and you send, we log into your account, pay for your application and then send it off to you. You also need to be aware that some countries, people from certain countries have, um, are eligible for application fee waivers. So it is your responsibility to check that you are not part of those people that don't need to pay an application fee. So we don't have to pay for people that don't need it. And yeah, that's all. We, so the first thing we will do is have our panelists introduce themselves. If we would love if you could tell us what you do in Cambridge, what made you want to apply to Cambridge and how did you find the application process as well as what are some, like what is one thing that either you wish you knew or that you did during your application that really helped you? So if Abel could start us off, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Yeah, interesting. Uh, thank you so much for the kind um, chance for for me to share my views, I was take, writing down the questions I needed to respond to in my introduction. But um, good evening, good afternoon to all the colleagues who are here, depending on where you're joining from. I'm happy to be here today and then to share my views and my, my experiences getting here. My name is Abel uh, Wilson Walekwa, like you, my colleague has mentioned for you. I come from Uganda, and so I'm in my first year here for my PhD. So in, in other words, I just came here, and I'm happy to, to share a very fresh experience of application because I haven't gone through a lot of experience within but at least I've gone through a lot of experience of a full year, of a full year uh, through the application process. So, so I'm doing vet medicine and specifically I am doing mathematical modeling of Rift Valley fever disease in Uganda. Rift Valley fever disease is a disease that affects humans and livestock. And so my area of interest is uh, diseases that affect humans and, uh, and animals. So I want to stand in the middle there and make a contribution moving forward. 
my background is in public health. And so um, I've done a lot of work in public health before crossing into um, vet medicine. I just want to emphasize to colleagues who are joining that um, for a PhD, the focus shouldn't be on the course that you that maybe you're applying for. That is just um, a narrow view. The big view is the topic that you intend to research on for four or three years. So, so the topic matters a lot. And I just want to emphasize that. What I did that helped me to get here is that I got to know of a lady who was here for her PhD. She's called Dr. Valentina Andolo. She just defended her thesis close to two months ago. So she was doing a PhD in vet medicine here and she's from Kenya. And so um, she's the one who told me about Cambridge. She's the one who built my confidence to apply in Cambridge. And she's the one who guided me on the application process actually. Um, so the first thing that I did very, very, which I think helped me a lot is meeting her. And my meeting her was in a simple way. I know this is just a small introduction. I can go on and on, but meeting her was in a very simple way. Um, her supervisor, her supervisor was, was one of the facilitators in an online training. And so I identified him as somebody whom I would like to continue working with. But at that time, I wanted to do my PhD at Makero University in Uganda. So he's like, okay, I can introduce you to my PhD student and you can continue working together. So he introduced me to the PhD student who is that lady from Kenya. And that lady read about me on the profile. And in the first meeting, as we are supposed to discuss issues of Makerere and how, I, how, she, how we can keep working together, she told me, um, okay, I told her, she told me how are things? I'm like, things are tough, you know. I don't have money, I'm struggling. I'm just paying for my CDF at Makerere University for my PhD. She said, no. Actually, I want to quote the words. That's, and even if I ended here, this can be an, an encouragement to somebody. She said, no. I bet you can't pay for your CDF for your PhD. I said, but I am paying for my CDF. I've just paid registration for close to, to 2,000 US dollars. She said, no. I've read about you on your LinkedIn and your profile. You're a very brilliant guy. You can't pay for yourself. I said, but I'm paying. She said, okay, let's leave whatever we're supposed to talk about today. Let me tell you about Cambridge. From the way I've read about you in your profile, you are supposed to be in Cambridge. I said, no, no, you're just, you're just kidding me. To cut the story short, I am at Cambridge. What, um, if I knew what I didn't, okay, I wish I knew. There was an online course I was doing, uh, that is the Master's of Science in Epidemiology and Biostat at University of California, Berkeley in the US. It, is, it was fully funded, fully funded. Yeah. And um, um, I was getting a lot of support from them and it was helping me to build the skill of epidemiology and the Biostat, which actually I'm building here, but. I declared it during the application process. And the, the purpose at that time, we wanted to make our application strong. We wanted to show that we have ever won other scholarships. And this was a big one, actually. This I had won 40,000, no, 48,000 US dollars for two years master's fellowship. So we declared it. Um, when I was admitted, when I was admitted, Later on, Cambridge insisted that I have to drop that master's course. So one of the things I regret if I knew, I wouldn't have declared that master's program because it was on, it was online thing and I could able to do it here because my PhD is by research. So I could actually do it when I'm here, um, even when I'm at Cambridge, but I was forced to drop it, which I did uh, one and a half months ago 
no, I think two months ago, and it was a tough decision, I should say. My supervisors in, in California near a shaded tree, they didn't want me to go. So I just want to stop there. And that's the biggest thing I wish I knew I wouldn't have done. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, so when you said, just out of curiosity, when you said like declared your master's, is it to like let the university know that you were doing the master's? Oh. Yeah, I, yeah. Okay. During, the, during the personal statement and during the CV, I stated it. And oh, actually, okay. we, we were hesitant we, because my supervisor interviewed, when he interviewed me, he asked me about it. I declared it to him. And he told me, actually, because the problem is that by the time the, I was interviewed, by the time my supervisor interviewed me, I, my, my application had already gotten in. It had already moved from the graduate, from the postgraduate admissions office to the department. So he's like, um, I'm afraid um, that this may be a hindrance. But uh, if they don't see it, uh, move forward with it, I will protect you. Now, mm. at that time, it was late. It was late. Oh. I had already declared. OK. OK. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, one thing you said that struck me was how the lady, Dr. Valentina Angolo, that mm -hmm. you had, because of your connection and how she coached you, that it really helped with your application. And that's why we're doing this program because we want to connect people from the continent to current um, Cambridge students so that we can help them with the application. So yeah, thank you for sharing your experience. And I just want to emphasize that that is why I happily said I am happy to come and be a panelist. Even if at the last minute, I'm happy to share experience because I'm telling you, just to share with you something that we met with this lady on 7th of November, by 7th of November. And the deadline was also 1st of December for, for oh, fun, wow. but we beat it, we beat it, yeah. So I wish I wish I had maybe known the idea. I wish maybe we had, like these, these programs you're having, I wish we had, I wish I knew of them early. Maybe, think, maybe I would have done more better, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Raymond, are you happy to go and just, yeah, like tell us about yourself, what you study and why you came to Cambridge and okay. one um, thing you wished you knew during your application as well. Um, thank you for having me once again. I'm Raymond and I'm from Ghana. I'm studying MCO Development Studies here. Sorry, yeah. is it possible for you to turn on your camera? Or okay. if it's not good, it's fine. Uh, hold on just a minute. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Um, I'm Raymond and I'm from Ghana. I have a, a background in political science. And then I'm doing MCO Development Studies here in Cambridge. I'm actually funded by the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship. So how I got here is I have, when I, when I was done with my national service, I was teaching assistants in my former university, KNUST. And then I had a group of friends that we used to talk about schools together and then all that. So there was a friend of mine who actually applied to Cambridge and then he got it last year, but then unfortunately he couldn't come. He chose a different school. So this, when the applications were opened last year, he told me that, why don't you apply to Cambridge? And I was like, oh no, I, don't, I think it's too competitive. And I don't think I would get in. Besides, I'm, I'm not, I lie that I'm not even interested in Cambridge, but everybody is interested in Cambridge. <laughs> so it was like, oh, just try. So. I went to I went to the the program website and then I looked at the core structure of the development studies program and I actually liked it. So I decided to apply. And then around that time, that was when African society was also uh, also brought out 
um, the, the application form for the mentorship program. So my friends alerted me and then I just applied and I was actually given a mentor who really helped me because I was so skeptical about applying. But then my mentor was always, he was more or less pressuring me. He was not even African. I think he was from India. He's called Tamana. So he was pressuring me. He, he would ask me why, you know, joining the meetings, what is wrong and all that. So I applied and then um, I got ad admitted and then later I got the scholarship. But the one thing I would like to tell everybody is that just aim for the, the big things. Don't look at, everybody is just like you. Everybody is just like you. Everybody has a first class like you or a strong upper like you. So don't underestimate yourself and then just um, aim for aim for the big things. Just try try whatever you want to try because when we were applying, I have so many friends who are even better than me. But then because they were scared, when you when you when you um talk about Cambridge, you say oh, Cambridge is so big. I'm not sure I'll get it. But then I'm sure if you try, you would. And then one thing is sometimes when you go to the program websites like my program development studies, when I went to the website, they said they are going to admit only fifteen people. Like the, the three-year average was 15 people <clears throat> per intake. So when I got here, I was actually surprised to see that we are actually 88, not the 15 that's on the website. So don't be scared. Don't, don't go on the website and then see those things and then let it scare you. And then I was also surprised to know that there are so many Africans here, so many African people from where we are from, and then they are just like us. So... I would like to encourage everybody to just put in an application, whether it's a master's program, whether it's a PhD program, just put in an application and then just be true to yourself. You can, when you are writing your SOP, don't think you have to come up with or your, your research proposal. I don't think you have to come up with something so big or something that has not been done before. Just the normal stuff around, around you, just be true to yourself. The normal things you are interested in, it will actually surprise you that the people here are also interested in that. And then please don't lie on your applications. Sometimes as Africans, when you're writing our SOPs, you like to exaggerate. Most of the, the lecturers that I've spoken to here from development studies, if you are applying to development studies or one of the social science courses, they actually have a lot of knowledge about Africa. So if you try to lie, and then say some things that are not true in your application just to get in. They might find out later and then they might cancel your application. So that is all I have to say. And I'm, 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 I'm open to helping anybody who wants to apply for the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship. So you can just contact me. So a nice meeting, everyone. Yes, thank you so much, Raymond. Um, I like how you said how like people feel shouldn't feel scared to apply. And yeah, that's something that like, people don't feel confident enough to come to another country and come to one of the best schools in the world. But like it doesn't it doesn't hurt to try. Like we also have the mentors and the mentorship, like make sure the mentors like encourage you because we know that some people feel like they're not like good enough for here, but everyone has the potential to be able to come here. So thank you so much for sharing. So now, oh, sorry. We're going, I'm going to give um, like two minutes. So how this session is going to go is that anyone that has a question can put it on the chat and then I will read out some of the questions. Depending on how many questions we get, we may not be able to go through everything, but I'll try to get to um, do like the most crucial questions. So I'm just going to give everyone like two minutes to write whatever questions they have on the chat, and then I'll present those questions to our panelists. So.
also it looks like one of our panelists chunzo is hasn't arrived yet so hopefully when they come in they could do that introduction but well before that happens we can just start with the q a session so let's give everyone a few more minutes Okay, so I'll make a start on the questions already on the group chat. So Raymond, I think this question is for you, but Helen says that she would like to know more about the Commonwealth Shared Program. Um, okay, I don't, I don't, I don't know so much about the program for other courses, but then I can talk about, about it in general. So the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship Program is a joint scholarship program um, from the between the Cambridge Trust and then the Commonwealth Scholarship Secretariat. So what actually happens is it's actually a fully funded scholarship. So what happens is the Commonwealth will take care of your school fees and then Cambridge Trust will also pay for your stipend and then your, your yes, those things, stipends and then your, your allowances. If you want to go for your conference, those tiny, tiny stuff. So um, there, there's actually, I'll try and get a link and post it in the common, a, a comment session, a session. There are so many schools that actually have this partnership with the Commonwealth um, Secretariat. So what happens is that there are six teams which revolve around SDGs. So each school will choose a number of courses that they want to qualify for the shared program. For Cambridge, um, looking at my colleagues that are also Commonwealth Shared Scholars, I think we are 10. I know people from Population Health Sciences, um, Public Policy, Development Studies, and then other programs. So it's, it's, it's only for people that are from Commonwealth nations. And then you have to write a few essays. That is what scares most people. It's not, it's not that much, just around 12 essays. Some of them are 250 words, some of them are 500 words. So first of all, you have to check, you have to check if the program you're applying for qualifies for the Commonwealth Shared. So I'm going to put a link in the comment section and then people can go on there and then read more about about it if they have any questions to they can ask yes uh thank you for that um i don't know whether i specified but do you need to make a separate application for this yes you actually do okay you actually do so after when you apply for the school or when you start your application you are given an application number. So you use that to um, apply for the Commonwealth Shared Program. And then um, one thing I want to clear about the Commonwealth Shared Program is when people are applying for scholarships in general, they focus so much on the scholarship 
and then they don't focus on their application. But one thing I know is that if your application is not strong enough, they are not going to select you for your scholarship essay to even be looked at. So please try and put in a strong application because they rank when the applications are here. One thing that one of the lecturers told me is that they rank the applications. So the, the best applications get the scholarship. So please try and make your applications as strong as your, your scholarship essays. Thank you so much for that. Um, so, Putzai says, I am applying for an MPhil for education, arts, and creativity, and it is research based. I did not write a research proposal on my application. Do you think it will weaken my application? I know it's not the same field as you, Raymond, but you're doing an MPhil as well. Is yours research-based? Mine is, okay, with development studies, it's our time it was optional, but right now it's compulsory for you to, to add a research proposal. And then the person that asked the question, I didn't catch your name, please go to the website and then check. Sometimes the proposals are compulsory. And then if you don't add a proposal, it means that you don't even meet the criteria. So your application might not even be considered. So if it's not too late, if you've, if you've already sent your application, you can try and talk to the, um, the people at the, at the um, program, the program administrators, and try and see if they will let you send the documents via email or something like that. Yes, thank you. Um, so, uh, yeah, Abel is putting nice resources on the chat so everyone can have a look at those. Thank you for that, Abel. So, Judith says, seeing that people in the life sciences can apply for three courses at the same time, would I need to write three GATES SOPs, statements of purpose, or would my referees need to write different references for different courses? Um, Abel, do you want to answer this question? I know it's not, I don't think vet med comes under life sciences, does it? It does, it does. Okay, okay, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I was only waiting for that. I am seeing so many questions that I'm happy to answer, but of course I have to keep waiting for you until you, you throw them to my side. Um, I want to begin from where uh, my colleague Raymond has just mentioned. Paying attention to details is one of the pathways for your getting to University of Cambridge. I want to emphasize paying attention to details. And you're very lucky that you have mentors, you have this mentorship program and you have us to speak to you and share with you these experiences. Go back and read on the website. And if you realize they need a research proposal, like Raymond has guided, really pursue it because um, here MPhil is mostly one year and the, the professors don't have a lot of time for you to come here and begin grappling with so many ideas in your mind in choosing the topic. Okay, choosing the research idea you want to work on. So they, that's why the proposal is important. It helps them to see how ready this student is to finish this M field in one year. So it's a marathon. So the more prepared, the more decided, the more, the more you have some sketches, the better. Okay, so I want to go to my colleague who just asked about um, the Gates uh, Foundation. I applied for it. I should tell you that I should tell members that uh, I won the Africa, uh, Cambridge Africa Change Makers Scholarship. It's a new one. It began in last year. It is offered under um, Cambridge Trust. And so <clears throat> members should take it up. I'm sure in the application system, it is going to be there this time around. So they, when, they, when you get there and you see it, you tick it there. 
um, deliberate labor are looking for candidates um, that uh, they, can, they can attract. They can attract in that line. But also, I want to tell you about the Mastercard Foundation scholarship that is ongoing for master's program. They are looking for certified scholars from Africa. I want to emphasize that. So I will be sharing a link uh, here very, very shortly. Now, for the, 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 the advantage with the with the with Cambridge Africa application is that the answers you begin by giving in the early stages, the system automatically filters some information for consequent questions. For example, if they asked you the gender and you say the female, as you go on and as you proceed with your application, there will be some scholarships, maybe for gender empowerment or women emancipation that will automatically come and they will ask you, would you like us to consider you for this one? So you just tick. You say yes, you say yes, you say I don't want this one. If you said I am married in the beginning, and that goes to what Raymond said, you need to be factual. You need to be very factual in the beginning, very, very factual. So if you said you're married, as you proceed through, they will ask that there will be some maybe married scholarships, maybe for children, and they ask you, do you want us to consider you? Uh, you said you have two children, you want us to consider you for children, something like that. So you say yes. And then they, they, then they will ask you, can you explain why we should consider the children? Then you explain. Now, the same thing happens. Uh, for example, if you've said um, you, um, you are applying for, so they ask you that, okay, you're planning to do masters in civil engineering, for example. It is among the funded programs for Gates Foundation. And you said you're from Africa or you're from Kenya or you're from Ghana where this program applies. Would you like to be considered for Gates Foundation? And you'll say yes. Remember that, that, that question you're answering for one, for one particular course. And so you say yes. And so they, they will have a separate, separate SOPs that will come, statement of purpose that will come for you to answer. Remember that how you structure a statement of purpose for a PhD in developmental studies will vary on how you structure a statement of purpose for a PhD in a, in a political science or in social administration. And that's why you need the three. That's why you need the you need the three uh, the three statements of purpose. However, for a PhD, in most cases, close to ninety nine percent, for you to go on with application, you will have contacted the supervisor. And I, I just want to take a chance from the colleagues here, maybe in the in the chat section, they could tell us how many have contacted supervisors, and how many have supervisors given a thumb up for them to continue the application. So if you're in touch with a supervisor, who is willing to supervise you moving forward? They will hardly encourage you to apply for so many, for so many courses, for so many courses. I'm referring to the PhD teams or, or even, even masters for some courses which require you to first contact a supervisor before you apply for them. So the message I'm trying to make is that I'm not encouraging you to spread yourself thin into so many applications because it requires different referees, it requires different SOPs and requires editing of your CV. That is a lot of work and you end up uh, forgetting certain things that you put in the other CV, in this new CV and when they see it here, they get angry and they just lose you out. So my advice is taking, taking, first of all, focusing on what you want and then taking a lot of time to hammer it well and you will get it. That's what I want to emphasize uh, on that point. But just to give a plain answer, the answer is yes. You need different SOPs, different CVs, different referral letters. And that's a lot of work, a lot of work, yeah. 
Uh, yes, thank you for that, Abel. Uh, just to make a note to people that have joined recently, you write your questions that you have in the chat and we'll, I will present them to the panelists. And also to Abel and Raymond, don't feel that just because I like directed a question to one of you that the other person can't speak. You can also chime in if you want. Um, so, so people are asking about the application fee waiver. I've just put in a web page on the chat that takes you to where you look at that. Uh, I can answer to Yahaya. Yahaya um, is talking about waiver, but also more light on the PhD application. Process. Oh, yes. Yeah, I can just throw more light on that. And that's why I sent the prospectors for 2023-2024. Colleagues, I want to emphasize, um, I am in touch with the, with the, with the admissions office because um, I expressed interest in supporting African or uh, African applicants. By the way, I want to mention this very clearly. The colleagues who are here, I hope all of them are from Africa, but uh, I hope all of them are from Africa or, or uh, uh, from Asia. But if we have others from other areas, please forgive me. Colleagues from Africa and colleagues from Asia who are on this call, I want you to know that you are gold. Cambridge is looking for you. Cambridge is, de is deliberately increasing its diversity, deliberately. For example, I was uh, talking, I, was, I had a coffee with some people who are dealing with the MasterCard Foundation. They are saying, I wish we can get so many applicants. They have 35 slots for this upcoming um, academic year, and they are worried whether they will get applicants. Can you imagine? They are worried if they will get applicants from Africa. By the way, their interest was easy. Africa, they said, I wish we can get people from Africa. So I want to tell colleagues who are here, two facts. Number one, Cambridge is looking at how to increase its diversity with the Blacker students. So please put your energy and put your focus. That's number one. Number two, Africa is still a great area for research. And so many, 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 Cambridge uh, lecturers and professors want to dive in Africa. And you are a link to that dive. You are a link for them to dive in Africa. So please, I want you to know that they want to come to where you come from and they want to support uh, that place more because the funders, funders are looking for ways on how Africa can be uplifted and, they, and the supervisors are looking for money. First of all, this, this is the link. Supervisors are looking for money for their research grants, but funders want to put money in Africa. So supervisors want to come in Africa. And so if you are from Africa, you are gold. That's a very important point uh, for you to note. So I've just sent a prospectus for upcoming for, uh, academic year, which I got just two weeks ago from the admissions office. Um, they told me, please give this to every serious prospective student because it hammers every information as far as the upcoming application process is concerned. And that's why even before I began saying something, um, I began by sharing it here. So I want to request colleagues who are here, including my colleague who was asking for information on the application for PhD uh, to read that prospectus, but plainly speaking for PhD number one is that you need to first of all, Think of what you want to do. That, that's very critical. I think th this is the last session. I think you must have hammered this earlier, but just to run through, you must decide on what you want to do. That's very important. Don't allow just to jump on anything. Number two, identify a supervisor whose interests are in line with your interests. Now that's, that's the most important thing you need. If the supervisor can accept you and says, yes, I want to work with you, Raymond or Moses, you are 50% in Cambridge already. The supervisor may are being interested in you. You are 50% in Cambridge. So I just want to, so once you're done with that, the, the application process is actually on the website, but also on, the, on that prospectus I've just shared with the colleagues. 
So I don't go into the details because they vary from course to course. But Yahya can dive deeper into personal reading and he will do a great job in understanding his discipline very well. More so than on the department's website. The department has a lot of information. Yeah. Yes, thank you. I completely agree. It has to be tailored to what you want and what you want to study. And it's more, a lot of it is you going to do your own research. Someone else cannot explain to you what you want to do. You have to find that out on your own. So thank you for that. Um, Log says, I'm applying to an MPhil in Cambridge. However, I'm currently running an MPhil at the moment and will be done before the resumption next year, but my results will not be out by then. Is it wise to apply without declaring my current study? Can I shoot at that? Yes. So two things uh, that person they didn't give the details is where he is doing that MFIL where? Is it in the Cambridge or in another place? That didn't come out. So love, can you just put on the group chat where you're doing the MFIL? Yeah, because the two facts come in here. So you're already doing an MFIL and you want to do another MFIL here, but you're worried over the results for this other current MFIL. So the current MFIL may not be a, a standing Unless if you want it to be a standing point for another M field, unless if you want it to be a standing point, it just you want it to see, you want in your application, you want to make, okay, you're doing it in Ghana. You're doing it in Ghana. It's not a, stand, it's not a standing point. I, I request that you be silent about it. You remember the message I, I earlier on said that, um, I disclosed um, and later on it, it, it became tough. I'm telling you, my scholarship, my coming to Cambridge was at just at the mercy of University of California, Berkeley. If the if University of California, Berkeley had said, this is our funded student, he is here until 2022, no, until 2023, June. I, and I wouldn't have come here and Cambridge was not willing to to defer my, my, my admission. So if you're doing it in Ghana and you are not using it as a stand point to shoot at this MFIL, keep silent about it. Now stand on the bachelor's pro, the, the undergraduate bachelor's program, the work experience, uh, the research experience and the topic you want to do and the problem you want to address in Ghana. That craft it around there. It will make your application very strong and you will hammer it uh, very well. And so you won't get worried of the results of this current M field. That's my shot at that. Um, can, I, can I also add something? Yes, please. I think sometimes it's difficult to already have an M field and then get another M field here. Unless maybe you want to change the subjects. So I know I know somebody who is so good had an MPhil at Oxford and they wanted to come to Cambridge and then they didn't even give him admission. Yeah. So I yeah. think if if it's in Africa, I have friends who are doing masters. I actually know somebody who was in a PhD in Africa, was in the second year and then got admission here and then cancelled where he was in Africa and then came here. So I think to make things simple, like my brother Abel was saying, just don't let them know. And then it's an added advantage to you because you have a little bit of master's training. So I think you can write better. You can, you can, you have a lot of research experience. So put that in your SOP and then in your application. And then don't, don't let them get to a point where they are thinking about whether to, to they, if they would have to contact your university or if you are going to leave this program because it's in the uh, Cambridge handbook that you can't, do this program alongside another program. Mm -hmm. So we just make things simple and then don't, I think you shouldn't add it to your application. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, then I can shoot at Peter. Peter is asking um, if you apply for separate funding and separate um, admission. It depends on the course that you are shooting at. It depends on the 
program you are applying for. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, in most cases, admission comes first and the funding will follow. For example, admission can come around January, around February, and the funding can come maybe in April, in May, in June, in July, in August. So depending on the funding scheme that you are applying for, for example, when I was in the system, a number of funding schemes came to me. One of them was the college. Since I had a ticket that I'm going to be at this college, that college has a funding scheme for postgraduates from Africa. So they told me, since you've, up, you've clicked, you want to be in this college, there is this funding scheme. Do you want us to be, do you want us to consider you? I said, yes. And they told me there is no need for another application. Then the same to Cambridge Trust. They told me Cambridge Trust is willing to support researchers and students from Africa or from marginalized countries. Uganda is among the areas and since you listed Uganda as your country where you come from, uh, would you like us to consider you should there be any scholarship at Cambridge Trust? I said, yes. And by the way, that's how I got it. So I didn't have to apply separately for me to get a Af uh, Cambridge Africa Change Makers Scholarship, which came, you can imagine it's a new one. So it just came like in our year, we are only six, and my colleague Chonzo, maybe who will join us later on, is a, is, a, is a fellow beneficiary of the same, and that's how we got to know each other. So we are only six for this current year. So I just think that, yes, should there be another scholarship that will come along with the way, I'm happy to be considered. And by the way, many, many things will happen in that line. Many, many, as, we, as you begin the application, by December, maybe you don't know, by June, Many scholarships will keep coming. And if you didn't click that I want to be considered, even if they come, they won't consider you. That's one thing I want to emphasize to colleagues. Cambridge is very specific with what you told them. By the way, in the, even in the, in the interview, the colleagues, I want to tell the PhD, more so colleagues, PhD, what you mentioned in the, in, in the application, please have evidence about it and be ready to talk about it when they call you for an interview. Uh, so they, even the system is automatic. The, the system will be generating uh, updates, reports, what is well synchronized, depending on what you told them in the beginning. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so Raymond, there are a few more questions on the Common Web Shared, shared um, Program. So someone has asked when if the application is open. I just Googled it and it says the deadline is 13th of December. Yeah. So if you, yeah, Abdullahi, if you want to look up, you can just look that up online. And Love is asking, does the Commonwealth uh, scholarship need to be declared on the Cambridge application portal that you're applying for it? Um, yes, yes, it has to, because normally, I remember when I applied, they asked me if I would uh, apply for Commonwealth. I would want to apply for maybe scholarships that my program qualifies for. And I take the yes. So mm -hmm. they, when, when the deadline was getting closer and closer, they sent me emails that I should actually go and apply for Commonwealth Share Scholarship. So even just take it. Even if you don't take it, they will, they will, after you apply, you see that they will be sending you mails that apply for this scholarship because you qualify for it. So any scholarship that they ask you that do you want to, uh, do you want to be considered for all departmental and college scholarships, just take yes. Yes. And then one thing I wanted to add about scholarships is that sometimes, especially the MCU programs, when you are applying, what you do is that we don't look at the, the, the faculty staff's research interest. Please do that and then align your, your research to them. To, to what they are actually interested in. Because I have a friend who got funded by um, one lecturer, his own personal funds. Okay, not his own personal funds, his own personal funds from um, um, a grant that he won because he was just interested in this topic. And then prior to applying, we didn't know about this. He just applied. And then a few weeks later, I got an email from the man directly that, I'm interested in your topic and then I want to sponsor you. So 
I'm going to send you a letter in a few weeks. So that was how you got his funding. So please make sure you go to the website and then align your research interest to somebody's research interest in the department. That makes it very easy for you. Just to add on something small uh, to Raymond, please in your, in your motivation letter, state it, state it that my research interest aligns well with Dr. So and so, who is working on this and even may want to work on this to help me like this, like this in the future. State it in your SOP. That's very critical. And I just want to add something small to what Raymond said. Please hammer the topic you want to study. You want to study home. You hammer it home. I want to give two scenarios. There is a gentleman whom I'm supporting to improve his CV. So yesterday he, uh, he sent um, a, uh, a, a, an application to, to, a, to, a, to a supervisor. And the supervisor, this was the message from the supervisor. He said, I normally get so many of such requests and I normally ignore them. But with yours, I have taken an exception. Can I have your CV now? <laughs> Just the way he mentioned, he was clear and he aligned the, 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 the research, the research he wants to do with the supervisor very well. Now I also want to share another experience. I, before coming here, I have been working in Uganda and I work in the office of the president. So in one of the calls, we, we support researchers and so some researcher had put that uh, I am interested to do, okay, I'm interested, I, in my undergraduate research, I did the mathematical modeling for malaria transmission in Butaleja district. Now that's this where I come from, it's one of the east areas, the Eastern Uganda. And he, he said, I was interested to see how mathematics can be used to advise on the control of malaria in a place which is a swamp and ABCD. Now myself, I was interested in that area of mathematical modeling for malaria. So I called him. I said, hello, I, I want to have a call with you. So did you do the, the undergrad pro project on mathematical mo modeling of malaria in Ibutaleja? He said, no. I said, but you have put it in your CV. He said, no, I was lying. I said, okay, fine. Um, supposing I have the money, I have the money and I have the money, are you willing to go and do it? He said, I don't know how to do it. Okay, I said, supposing uh, there is a mechanism for you to be trained along with the process and I have the funding, are you willing to undertake it? He said, no, I don't know what to do and I'm not ready. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what you put in your CV and you can't defend it? So I just wanted to add that point there, yeah. Yes, yeah, very true. Thank you. Um, so, he's asking about the Chairman Standard Chartered Bank Scholarship. Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with that. Oh. And the African, Standard Bank Chairman Scholarship. I think it's, it's, it's sponsored by a bank, Stambeg Bank in Africa. So they give, they, it's, it's just like uh, the commercial share, it's fully funded. But I think at Cambridge there are specific courses that qualify for that. So okay. if, you are, if you are applying for, if your course qualifies, then you can apply for that as well. I know that it's at LSC and then it's tier two. So, um, check. Don't just apply for the scholarships because you've heard it's fully funded. Sometimes they have this eligibility criteria and all that. Please check that. You don't want to apply for a scholarship that is not related to your the course that you do. That is why when you're applying, when you're applying and then they bring the list of scholarships, there is a link attached that you can click and actually go and read about the scholarship. So please don't just take any scholarship anyhow because be mindful that somebody is going to look at your application and you don't want the person to be irritated. You might have good stuff in there, but if the person looks at how you, you, you've gone about your application, the person might even get angry and then will decide to throw it somewhere. So please pay attention to detail. I think Abel has already emphasized that. And then every scholarship that you qualify for, just apply for it. 
Yes. Thank you. I've just sent uh, two web pages on that scholarship. So a miracle you can have it read through. It's also on the Cambridge Trust website. And yes, I agree with what you said that you have to make sure that you take your application seriously. And also these people reading applications are reading maybe thousands of applications. So they don't have time. If there's like something that doesn't like add up or make sense, they can just say, okay, this person is not like they have to read thousands of applications. So they, can, they don't have time to try and understand like what you're trying to say. You have to make it easy for them and to understand and also make it, um, you don't want to put them off by what you're saying. Because if you're making like not straightforward statements, they don't like that. And they will just throw your application away. Just to add on something there, I'm, I'm encouraging colleagues to, be, to, to, to have the message I mean, don't write two, three paragraphs and hide the message in paragraph number five or paragraph number six. That's what my colleague is trying to emphasize here. Hammer the message in paragraph number one. So because there you, you are encouraging, you're, you're, you're capturing their attention to continue reading other paragraphs um, of your work. Don't delay to hammer the message home. And what do I mean by saying hammering the message home? Hammer the research interest clearly. Hammer the topic you want to do clearly. Align with the supervisor who aligns with your work early enough. And the hammer the, the research lab, the research uh, capacity of Cambridge that will help you to achieve that topic or that uh, research project. Don't bring that message later on. Don't. You will meet, they will throw your work away, yet the message which is good is in, in paragraph number five. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I add something to? Yes. Um, please try and be consistent too. Because sometimes you would be asked to write maybe different essays for different purposes. And then here we see you talking about maybe food insecurity. And then here you are talking about climate change. And then you, you don't, don't bring any link. So if you are trying to talk about different things in different essays, please make sure there is a link. Don't, don't tell us that, don't tell them. I said, I said, don't tell them that maybe I'm interested in maybe poverty in Africa. And then next time we see you are talking about LGBTQ rights. Because maybe that interest in Africa would make them want to consider you for the scholarship. And then when they go and read your scholarship essay, you are talking about something else. So please try and make sure your everything is consistent. Some, something like common shared, they ask you that, what do you plan to do in, in, in future? Mind, mind you, you've already said that in your application that oh, maybe I want to be a researcher here. And then in your scholarship, I say, you come and see that, oh, you say, I want, to, I want to maybe work at a bank. So please make sure you are consistent. And then also somebody was asking about the English language stuff for Ghanaians. So what happens is that, except in the case of, I think, the law courses, corporate law and then LLM, what happens is that after you've gained admission, You'll be asked to schedule a call with somebody. I think I've forgotten the lady's name. And then the person will call you and then the person will have a chat with you to evaluate your language skills. So the person will just chat with you normally and then after that, you are done. So you don't have to write eyelets unless the call specifically says so. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's only corporate law and then LLM that specifically says so for Ghanaians. Yeah. So if not that, you just have to relax and then focus on the application. Uh, just to add on something small there, uh, and colleagues should not get worried about the English language. Among the universities I've applied for, I've found Cambridge as a, being among the most friendly and flexible university. They are very good. Colleagues, I'm telling you, Cambridge University application is very good. If you put your energy there, you're going to get in by all means. Not because of your grades, not because of words. Once you put your mind there, you will get in. So, like my colleague Raymond has mentioned, that's what happened to me as well. Now, I want to share my experience as well. Um, so I stated in the email, they contacted me by email that, okay, so we want to assess your English, blah, 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 blah. Uh, wh what do you prefer, a Skype, a Zoom, a call? I said I want to do a call. Um, which date works for you? I put the dates. And I even put the phone number for them to call on. You know what? 
I forgot the, the date and the time. So I got busy into the work and I was busy working. So from nowhere, I, we were, I was moving from one worker station uh, to another worker station. So we're on the highway, I saw a call. And that's how I remember that I have an appointment for a call for an English assessment. I was in a noisy place. I was on the, on the roadside. So I don't want you to make that mistake again. Please take note of the appointment that you made. So they, uh, so we had a telephone call. I tried to get into the bush, which was away from the tr high traffic. And so that's how I was waved off and I was cleared. And it was just a normal chat. So how is it? Tell me how is home? So tell me, so why are you interested in coming to Cambridge? Okay, so... So tell me, are you, have you ever booked any ticket online? The way you respond, your accent, your fluency will come out and they will say, okay, this person is able to manage in, in the UK or this person cannot manage in the UK. So I want to encourage you, Stefan and the colleagues who are here that English shouldn't be a barrier. It shouldn't It'd be strong and you will be able to get through it. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, uh, throughout the like program, people have had a lot of questions about the English language requirements. And if you look online, the like information is very, like that different stuff you see at different parts of the admissions website. And I and Maisha didn't actually have to do IELTS when we did our application. So we didn't know, really know what's like, we didn't have actual experience of using the English Language Center doing IELTS as well. So thank you so much for sharing. Yes, English shouldn't be a barrier. You can use the Language Center assessment if you want. Um, I think we have covered all the questions. Oh, if, I add something? Yes, of course. Um, okay, and then one thing, I don't know about most courses, but one thing, that I think my department really likes, the Department of Politics and then International Studies. One thing I've realized is that they like it when you, you talk about um, uh, where you rank in your cohort. So if you have access to those giving you the recommendations, please tell them to include that. Maybe this person was in the top 5%, this person was in the... And then don't, don't, don't think that you are flouncing your achievements too much because you don't know what somebody too is coming with. So please try and emphasize. I have a friend who applied here and didn't get admission. And then the, my friend is actually a valedictorian with 16 awards from his former university. But then because he she failed to highlight it, I was always telling her that highlight it, highlight. She said, no, it's already my CV. So I'm sure I will bore them. So she didn't, she didn't, put, she didn't put it in her... SOP, she didn't put it in any of her other documents. So please try and highlight any achievement that you think would be good for you. But then don't make it so monotonous that the person will be bored reading it. Just you can find a way, a nice way to chip it, to chip it in in your maybe your CV, your SOPs, and all that, because it also helps from what's from my experience. Yes, thank you so much for that um someone if you have a question you can drop it on the chat i see your hand is raised as someone is typing in the chat as he's oh. typing I want, to um, I want to encourage members to pursue recommendation letters early. I want to highly, highly, highly recommend that. Uh, these professors of ours, you may not have, you, can, you can't go to them and say, but excuse me, the deadline is tomorrow. Please, please, please. please. I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm begging colleagues to pursue this early, early enough, and, uh, and you, you get over that um, early enough. Yeah. Yes, yes. And that was something we highlighted our very first session in August. We told them to start like asking that, finding out who the referees are and getting the references together. So hopefully most people already have a reference ready. Um, okay, Samuel, 
I'm giving you the floor to ask your question. Yeah, thank you. So I'm applying to the MPhil chemistry program and on the application, they ask like some course specific questions. They are asking me to give details of any relevant research experience and explain how like your relevant experience and aptitude makes you suited to the to, to independent research. Each, each of these prompts have, so the first prompt has 1,500 characters as, as the limit. The other one has like 1,000 characters as the limit. I feel like, okay, so for me, I have a lot of research experience and I don't know, because when I try, it's like 1,500 characters is too small for me. I don't know the kind of content I should put in each of them. Should I just list some of the experiences without providing much context to it? Or I should talk about it in details? Can I shoot at that? Yes, of course. Thank you for your question, Samuel. <laughs> yeah, so Samuel, I want to tell you very important skills that you should begin that this application process is taking you through. By the way, you're learning and you take this as a learning process, irrespective of whether you get in or you don't get in, you are going to learn a skill or skills out of this entire process. And if you get chance and you get in, by the time you get here on 1st of October, 2023, you will have learned a lot along with the process. Now, if you can't speak what you want to say in, in five words, then you don't have what to say. That's what one of the professors mentioned here. If you cannot speak what you want to say in five, in five words, then you don't have what to say. You just have too much, too much, too much, um, too much of unnecessary information. What am I saying? Writing is a skill. Being concise is a skill that grows over time. You should be deliberate to follow the, the word limit. Don't give less and never exceed. I should tell you this, never exceed. Of course, in the system itself, sometimes it, it, as you try to upload, it may refuse. I say, no, you, this is exceeding by this number of characters. But a secret to this is that in the department website, in the department website, they describe what the course or what MOPhil chemistry is all about, which courses they are going to teach. They describe it. Now that is a cheat sheet for you. That's a cheat sheet for you to ensure you're hammering part of that, but also you're hammering part of the work, uh, part of the chemistry uh, courses you undertook at undergrad because they try to help them to show how you're competent to come and do this M field. So you, you're using the chemistry content you studied at undergrad to, to match it with the, what they have listed on the website. So that, that you don't, don't take the website uh, for M, M field chemistry for granted. It's a, cheat for, it's a cheat sheet for you, but a few people know it. So don't just write too much. I imagine, I know in Africa, we do a lot. We do A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z, but not all of them may be relevant to this line. So you only focus to this line and the website will guide you where to focus. And you try to show them that you have a basis. The basis is either in your training of undergrad in chemistry or in whichever course you did in undergrad, but also you're showing them you've been you have research experience in A, B, C, D that actually aligns with what they are looking for in M for chemistry. So you try to play the game between what you already have with what they are looking for, and then they will see that you are a good match. But you can never say, I, I, I'm failing to, 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 to reduce the content. So that's just my point on that. You, it's a skill. So you may, you may find that the first, the first write-up you may have a lot, then you leave it to sleep. After two days, you come back, you reduce the words, 
you give to your mentor to go through. And when he gives back to you the third time you shoot at it, it will be a fully improved work worth submitting. That's my advice. Thank you. So these are the final two questions and then we'll round up. So, um, Chujo asks for, what is the CSSS? So while you put that ans um, answer on the group chat, Chujo, we'll move to Samuel's question. So Samuel is asking Raymond, what, which option do you suggest he puts under the English language proficiency section on the application? Um, I've actually forgotten the options, but then I think there was an option where you I don't I don't remember, but you have to let them know that you've done you have a, some background. I think Ghana is a B list country. Yeah, I just remembered. So you just tell them that uh, you are from a B list country, and then you've had your 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 your, your undergrad um, education in English. So I think you have to. That is what. I remember something like that. So that is what you have to do. Just, okay. to, add, just to add something small there. When they ask you that, uh, do you do you think you qualify? Okay, do you have you done English test? There will be three options there. You either have IELTS or TOEFL. You qualify for a waiver. You're from this country, which qualifies for a waiver. Which automatically qualify for a waiver, or you think you should be exempted. So you yeah. click. I should be exempted. There will be a follow-up question there. Why do you think it should be exempted in say 200 words? And you will explain. My country, we have been doing this, we have been doing this, and more so, if you have ever written a public, if you have, if you have any research publication, I want to emphasize this to guys who are planning for PhD and you're, you're just finding the English content. If you have any publication, that is a strong point to, to show that actually your English can, is, is strong, it can be peer reviewed, it can be understood by other people. So please cite that work and even give a comment. Even if you have ever written a blog, a, a blog, just a blog, and it was, it's published online, please talk about it. Yeah. Thank you for that. So, uh... Chujo is asking for a sample of essays for the CSS, for the Commonwealth Shared Program Ship. Scholarship. Um, okay, normally it's, I've tried getting, like putting essays together for my, my friends, but then it's difficult for people to give their essays out. Very, very difficult. So I think the Commonwealth Shared Cambridge, those of us that are in Cambridge are going to have another seminar where we'll talk about that, we'll delve into that. So if he's interested, he can. I can give him my email or he can give me his mail and then I'll make sure I get him connected to, to any of us, depending on the program that he's applying for. But then it's very difficult getting people's essays to, to give out. It's very, very difficult. So those are the options. Which I highly don't encourage anyway. Myself also, I don't. Like today, there is a colleague I'm supporting from Kenya. She's applying for a PhD uh, at University of Edinburgh. Then so she's like, can you give me the outline for your PhD concept, of which, which I gave her? Put this, put this, put this. Like, okay. After giving her, after one hour, she's like, can you send me your PhD concept for me to read it through? And I get an idea. I'm like, no, I won't give you, but I'm happy to review what you have written. I told you I'm happy to review what you have written. And I think that should be the message everywhere because people tend to duplicate whatever you have, yeah, which is not a good thing. And it will, let, it will bring them down. It will pull them to zero, yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, I think that is all the time we have. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you so much, Abel and Raymond for taking the time out today to answer all our questions and to give us tips and guide us in applications. Thank you so much for coming. Um, just a final uh, note on the application fee waivers. There are a few questions on that. The website says you need to send in your application 10 days before you actually need to submit. So this cannot be last minute. So 
you need to start now or find out whether you are whether you're eligible. If you're not sure, you can just email the admissions office. They're very nice people. They'll reply you and tell you if you are eligible or not. And they need to fill the application form in the web page that I have sent on the group chat to everyone. I will also send this around in the email of the recording of this session as well. So that's it. Thank you everyone for coming. Hope your applications go well. Good luck with everything. Take yeah, make sure that you are paying attention to details in your applications, um, that you don't, if you're doing multiple applications, that you're not just using different stories for each application. You're telling one story throughout your entire application for both scholarship and application to Cambridge. Yes, keep in mind all these useful tips that Abel and Raymond have shared with us. And yes, good luck and hope everything goes well. Thank you for can coming. I, can, I, can I add something? Yes, of course. Okay, one last thought. Um, what I would like to say is there is no such thing as like the right way to write an essay to get admission. Just be clear in your message. Don't don't think that I have I know somebody who wrote about this, so I'm going to write about something similar. No. Just be clear. There is no right way. There is no people say you have to. Your first paragraph, you have to write this in there. I've seen people that have turned it around and then they still got admission. So we just make sure that whatever you are doing makes, makes um, pardon me, sense. When somebody reads, the person will understand and try to get what you are trying to say. So that's what I wanted to add. And nice meeting all of you. Thank you so much. So thank you, thank you Chisholm. Thank you, Raymond. Thank you, Abel. It was a very nice section. Thank you so much. Uh, very enriching. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. So I will stop sharing my screen. Raymond, Raymond, I've sent, I've sent, I've sent you an invite. Thank you. So uh, feel free to leave whenever you.